Welcome to Talking Technology with NCBI Labs, where we believe that technology is the single greatest enabler for people with sight loss and all disabilities. If you are interested in the latest technology news, products, and innovations, then you've come to the right place. Yes, hello and welcome to Talking Technology episode number 29. Can you believe it? We are almost at 30. We're, we're going into the, uh, we'll, we'll be having our midlife crisis soon, but uh, hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully we'll get through it easy enough. So yeah, welcome into the show. It is the 18th of April and we do have an absolutely packed show for you today. We're going to be talking to Michael Griffith later on. He's going to be telling us all about the air tags. We're also going to be talking to Moredo Mahli. She has been trying out a really cool accessible power bank. She was showing me this recently, actually, really cool piece of technology. So we'll talk to Mairead later on about that. We'll also be talking about the TFI real time app, which is shutting down today and being replaced by the new TFI live app. So we'll be showing you how you can move all of your favorite stops over to the new platform that's coming up as well later in the show and we'll have a show packed with tech news too. So do stick with us over the next little while. If you want to get in touch, you can either use the Q&A panel in Microsoft Teams or you can send us an email throughout the show to labs at ncbi.ie. So do stick around and let's get this show on the road, shall we? So first up, uh, we've covered a little bit in the past about the Apple AirTags, but what are they like to use? Well, Michael Griffith has been trying out the AirTags for us, and he joins us now on Talking Technology to tell us how he's getting on. Michael, how are you? Okay, I think what we might do, um, rather uh, that while we work on getting uh, Michael connected to us, uh, if we can bring in uh, Mairead here. So, uh, Mairead, you have been trying out a really cool, uh, accessible uh, Energrid power bank. I've uh, I've never really uh, come across power banks that have been highly uh, accessible before. Uh, they tend to usually indicate a lot of stuff with lights and so on. But you've been trying out a new accessible equivalent. So, first of all, what is this thing? It sounds pretty cool. Yeah, um, so it's like, I suppose it's roughly like the size of the iPhone, maybe iPhone FE, kind of around that size. It's fairly flat and it just has um, one button on it there for that you basically hold down. Um, so you get alerted to how much battery you have by, um, so you get alerted by a series of vibrations or beeps or you can have both so depending so that can be very useful so um you just hold down the it just has the one button it's the power button and you just hold it down and like if it goes if it vibrates four times or makes an audible tone or both it's like you basically have anything from 75 to 100 percent battery um and if it's three times you basically have like um, 50 to 75 and twice would be 25 to 50 and one would be like, you know, you kind of know you need to start recharging it again, maybe. So you, you'd roughly get about four charges out of it. Um, and I suppose for me, the main purpose of getting this device really was, I suppose, when you travel a lot and things, you're often looking for power sockets and things, maybe on trains or buses or whatever to plug in the phones. And if you're not on the right side of the seat that has the power socket, well, you know, you're kind of without you're battery. You're in trouble. So, yeah, so <laughs> it was my main purpose. Now, I had tried other power banks before, um, but the problem with those was you never had any indication of how much battery was in them because there was no um, haptic feedback or audible tones out of it. Um, and I think what used to happen then is like when you'd, you'd accidentally be pressing against the button when it's in your bag and Sure, before you know it, when you go to use it, then there was no battery in it. Yeah. So at least this way, I, you know, I have a fair idea of how much roughly how much battery I have in it. Now, I suppose I would love um, one thing about it is it would be great if the percentage was a little bit more accurate because okay. 
you know, when you get down to one vibration, maybe. Um, well, you could have anything really, I suppose, from 25 to, you know, from zero to 25 percent kind of. So, you know, there could be a big difference in that really. Like, so you're kind of sure. wondering, will I get a full charge or will I only get maybe 20 percent of a charge? So I suppose sometimes maybe just to be on the safe side, I might charge it up a little bit too often. But roughly I get four goes out of it. Um, what Does I tend it charge to quickly, Moritz? So like you plug your phone into it. You know, I've had this with, with power banks before where some will charge the phone like a snail and then, and then other power no, banks will charge it like it, a rocket. I would, say, I would say to be fair, it charges it just as fast as what your phone would and even faster. Like, um, you know, when I'm charging my iPhone there from the wall socket, I would charge it um, using the 20 amp plug. So the faster charger. And that's like, you know, that's like it would be charged, I suppose. It would be from like zero to 80 percent, maybe in about an hour. So and the power bank would be pretty similar. It's okay. from the last 20 percent then is what would take kind of the longest. But, you know, it's it's that's you the know, optimized you get battery charging kicking in there. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose what I like about this as well is, um, you know, if I ever decided to upgrade a phone in the future or whatever, or the, you know, the new iPhones come out with the USB-C connections and all that kind of thing, that it has a USB-A port in it and a USB-C port in it. So, so you have the options there. You have the options there. Yeah, that's what I like about it. It's very easy to carry around as well, I suppose, because it is fairly flat. Um, is it heavy? And I suppose no, it's actually quite light. You wouldn't even know you had it. I mean, I could easily fit it in my jacket pocket and, you know, it's not bulky or anything. It, I, In fact, I'd say it would actually be nearly, probably would be thicker or as thick as the phone, I suppose, but it's um, it's just more kind of evenly spaced shape to it. It's more, you know, so it's it kind of has that about it. And I suppose for the visual user then, if somebody has any little bit of sight or whatever, there's a little kind of a screen um, on the on the device as well on the top of it, like kind of where the smooth area is. And I suppose they would know how much battery is in it as well. Roughly, there's a little indication of light. So I suppose it kind of has little indications of light and how much battery is there. So That's good to know. I, yeah, I think it's really good to have like you can either have the, you know, the haptic feedback or the audible feedback or both. So so you'll get four four beeps and vibrations together or four vibrations on their own or three or depending on what it's at like what the battery level is at so and how do you find like the vibrations they're they're strong enough oh i find them strong enough yeah i, I kind of wouldn't want them any stronger okay. um for me i kind of find that okay um and you can hear it as well like because it like there's a, you can hear the vibration going as well like it's like a really loud phone on silent kind of OK, um, and I suppose what I what the real the thing that I really do like about it is when I plug the iPhone or iPad or whatever into it to be charged, you'll get um, two very long vibrations. So you'll know basically that the device you're charging has gotten power to it, that it is actually charging, because okay. I suppose that's another thing as well about some things that have, you know, USB devices or whatever. You plug them in like and you plug them into the wall or whatever and you're kind of just hoping they charge like especially something like headphones like airpods or something like there's no indication that they're charging you just hope for the best so i can charge them off this device as well which is very handy and what about actually charging the power bank itself then how long does that take to charge and is there a way of knowing while it's charging when it's fully charged let's say um yeah that is the thing that i would kind of love to have built into it and I think I really do feel it was a missed opportunity that there's no kind of loud audible tone or vibration or anything when the device is fully charged. So you kind of just have to press the button again quickly to see how many vibrations you'll get while it's charging. But I think sometimes that can be a little bit misleading because I could have it charging for half an hour and I might have only had one vibration in it. And I could have it charging for half an hour and next thing all of a sudden you've got three or four vibrations in it. I, I don't think it would be charged that fast because um, one night I I kind of <laughs> I probably shouldn't have left a charge overnight, but I did because I just forgot it that I plugged in anyway, but I left a charge overnight. Um, and I, I remember commenting like that. I'd say I charged a phone twice on it and I had about maybe 
um, 20% battery in both when I started charging. I charged them maybe up to about 80%. And I remember saying, God, this is very strange. Like even when I checked the battery status at the end, it was still on four by four vibrations. I was thinking, geez, did this use any battery or what? Like, but then like a, a few days later when I plugged in another device and put it charging, like I'd say five minutes after I put the other device charging, it was gone down to two beeps, two vibrations. Yeah. So sometimes it's maybe not as accurate as what you'd like, but I suppose it's still a good indication how much, roughly how much battery you've got or if you need to charge it soon again. It's certainly better, better than having no indication than having I think, nothing, yeah. Yeah. where you're at with it. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, are they expensive devices, Maraid? Yeah, they are. Well, I suppose they are about 90 euros, roughly. I purchased it from blindshell.com, um, I think. It was blindshell anyway, I purchased it from. Um, and then there was about maybe a 15 euros delivery charge. Okay. Um, but to be fair, I ordered it on the Sunday and it was at my door with UPS the following Tuesday. Like so, um, you know, so it was it's very fast delivery and it was, you know, came by courier as well. So I suppose, you know, it was it, it, for me, it was worth it anyway, because um, the other power banks, if you like this one is a, a, a 10,000 MR battery capacity, you can get in a 20,000 as well. Um, so like the more capacity you have like the more charges you'll get out of the phone of course the bigger the device will be as well um so for me the 10 is perfect because i get roughly four charges out of it it's mainly the se20 i charge of it off it and sometimes i charge the iphone 12 off it as well so um and the ipad and the braille display so you know it, it works with a lot it's compatible with a lot of devices for charging so it's great and so in general you're a fan of it what would you change about it you you did mention some stuff earlier on but uh in terms of like the charging and you prefer if it had a more a, of a solid indication when it was charged and so on but is there anything that you think the device is missing um i think it would be nice to have voice feedback in it as well like where it would actually announce the amount of battery like in a very accurate percentage rather than um you know rather than just relying on the vibrations because that could be you know there could be 25 percent of a difference roughly in battery capacity um so i think i would like that as well maybe um, um i suppose maybe when it got to a certain point like maybe when it went to maybe um 50 battery or something that you get an audible tone just there and then as well that you'd know that you're roughly on the 50 percent mark um, I would like and definitely I think an indication of when it's fully charged would be really good like an audible sound or something. You had mentioned previously I think in one of our newsletter articles where you were discussing it that it has little tactile kind of icons on it but they're I not did in actually, braille. Yeah they're so not. I'm not really sure what them? the. Well yeah, it's actually a good it's a good um question actually because what i thought they were initially was i thought they were to indicate the different um usb port connections because like you've two us you've um a usb c port you've kind of a micro usb port um which i don't really use in it and you have a usb a port but they kind of they're very faded the tactile markings um now i know there is like a kind of a difference sorry between the usb ports when you feel them but I suppose I'd like the markings maybe to be a little bit stronger and like, you know, if it actually had the Braille feedback like um, C for USB port, for USC port or A, because there's one of the markings, I don't think it's actually Braille, there's one of the markings, it's kind of like a C with an extra dot onto it. Um, and that's what's actually on the USB A port. So I think it's more, I'm not really sure what the tactile markings were there for, but you know, I do think it was kind of a missed opportunity to mark the little areas as well. OK, interesting. So overall, you would say it's worth it, but there, there's stuff that they can improve on for a future version, is it? Yeah, definitely. There's definitely, you know, improvements. But I, you know, for me, it is worth it because, I mean, you could pay 30, 40 euros for another power bank of the same capacity, I suppose, a mainstream one, but you just don't have that feedback with it. And as I say, before you know it, the battery is gone in it. Um, and I suppose the buttons are a lot easier to press on them too in your bag, whereas this is kind of a side button, so it's it's not as easily pressed. 
Um, it wouldn't easily as it's not as easily pressed with, you know, with the mainstream ones, I think they're kind of easier to press them. And it's easy enough to feel the button when you do want to find it then, is it? It is, yeah, it's kind of like um, it's on the side of the, vi the device really and it's kind of like it's the only long kind of a, it's kind of a long button. Um, and it's it's the only button on the device anyway, so so that button basically like, you know, you can you press it once quickly and it'll give you the status of the battery in it. And if you hold it down, you can like. Um, it'll change between vibrations or an audible tone or like um, the you can have the option of both. I suppose I could just play it here to see if you can hear it, but I know you may not hear it. Um, well, it's worth so a shot. We'll just give it a shot. OK, so did you hear that beep? I didn't know. It, no, uh, okay. so it I just don't gave think one beep there, so <laughs> it gave one beep there, so my battery in it is fairly low. OK, Hi, David. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, can, I, can I come in there, please? Um, I, yep. can. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the uh, um, by this the size of the sound of the, the uh, sound of the size of the product. It's, it's uh, the size of it would be um, nice and, and small and light compared to some of the power banks I've looked at, and uh, they're very heavy. You, you know, you had something in your bag, for example. These are the, these are the ones that are not accessible, of course. But um, as comparison to other products like MagSafe cases and MagSafe chargers and things like that. Would you ever think of going for something like that, Mairead, or have you tried any of those other kind of ones like MagSafe? Um, I had thought about them in the past, but I suppose it all depends as well on um, what iPhone you're using because it's they're not all kind of compatible with them, I don't think, as far as I'm aware. Like, I would say for my personal one now, I have the SE20, and I don't think you can get one for that. Maybe you can, but I know when I asked other people previously, it was like, they, anyone that had them kind of said the battery, you know, they're the case, it makes the phone case very bulky. Um, so I, I've, I haven't come personally come across one, but look, it's it's an option that I definitely should look at in the future as well if I upgrade a phone or whatever. Um, but um, I suppose, yeah, I suppose then it's just another device. I suppose it's another kind of a bulky case to be carrying around, whereas the phone I suppose can be bulky enough as it is, whereas this you wouldn't even know I have it in a tiny pocket of the rucksack. You wouldn't even know it was there. Yeah, that's, um, what, impressed, that's what impresses me. But yeah, uh, whereas I kind of feel I'd be carrying a lot extra if I had a MagSafe or something like that. One of those cases, because a lot of people have told me that they've been they found them fairly heavy or the battery mightn't have been as good in them as they thought it would have initially been or the capacity of it kind of drains a bit faster. So I've never kind of and plus they are quite expensive as well. As far as I'm aware, they they would be as I'd say they would be as costly, or if not more than the you know than the accessible power bank as well. And I suppose when I was getting this as well, I suppose I basically you know thought as well that you know I might with this I'd actually maybe get to charge more devices with it. Whereas with the MagSafe, you're kind of limited yeah. to just the Makes phone or whatever. Yeah, so really with this, I could do the iPad or the Braille display or you know anything like that. So yeah, you're a busy IT trainer, which Plenty of devices and you're on the move, I suppose. Yeah, so it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And Mairead, we, we've seen it in recent years and it can be controversial sometimes that, you know, uh, phone manufacturers in particular, they won't include, you know, things like the power brick and stuff in the box. So did you get a power mm. brick in the box with this or was it even a like, no, was it an it Irish UK plug? No, it was just a tiny, there is no plug at all. I'm actually using the, I use the plug off the, Braille Sense 6 or my iPad Mini 6. That's the that's the plug I use. Now it did come with a tiny cable, all right, but that's a, kind of a micro USB cable. I think if you're going to charge it from the computer, but to be honest, I think it would take forever to charge from the computer. So, um, because it's one of those micro USB things. So, okay. Yeah, I just use the iPad charger or my the one from the Braille Sense 6. Well, Mairead, thank you so much for answering our questions on it. You have written a review of this, which is available on the NCBI website and in the uh, technology newsletter. So thank you so much for trying it out for us. And uh, yes, yeah, sounds like a really cool product. Brilliant. Thank you.
so that is uh, the Energrid, uh, I believe it is called, the Energrid uh, power bank, an accessible power bank, really cool device. And now we are going to have attempt two. Maybe, we, maybe we've got him. Uh, we have Michael Griffith on the line. Hello, Michael. Hello, David. I think hey, we, we got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. That's OK. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Michael, you have been trying out and we, we've spoken a little bit about these before, but you've been trying out the air tags for us. So firstly, if you want to tell us just a little bit about what are the air tags and how are you using them? Well, first of all, I'm, uh, I've become a, a fan of air tags. Uh, they've they've turned out uh, it, it, it has turned out a very useful uh, instrument for me. Um, they are little round um, devices uh, which um, come uh, with a battery and there's a little um, uh, separation between the battery and the instrument itself when you open the, the box and um, as soon as you connect the battery to the instrument um, uh, a, a message comes up on the on your iPhone, and it, um, it it virtually kind of instructs you how to proceed from there. And um, you you can choose uh, one of um, uh, I think seven or eight, maybe uh, yeah, seven or eight uh, different um, uh, items to uh, um, attach uh, the AirTag to. Uh, for instance, your keys or um, uh, several other um, uh, a backpack is another one. You have. There are several um, items that you can connect the backpack to, and um, uh, even if you can, if, if in my case I wanted to connect the the, the, the tag to. Uh, my television remote control and there isn't a specific uh, label for that so what i did is i just called my television remote control my backpack so i um i i had to sellotape the air tag onto my remote control and then all i had to do then when i need, need to find my remote control is to uh, ask um my to ask uh, iPhone, um, I say Siri, find uh, my backpack, and in a minute, uh, less than a minute, about fifteen seconds or thirty seconds, you hear it ringing, um, and uh, then you just follow the sound, and there's your, your, there's your, your remote. Yeah, there's your remote, and I, I have to say, I used it, I used it on several occasions. You know, it's a. Uh, it's, it's something that's really useful for me, you know, so I'm a I'm, I'm real fan of it, you know, and it's it's so simple, really, you know. Um, uh, so, you know, um, yeah, it's it's a the only slight disadvantage is that it's difficult to attach it to something like a remote control. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, server tape is a great solution to that. Absolutely. Yeah. So. I, uh, it's interesting, just so you know as well, you can, and maybe you weren't able to do this in recent uh, versions, but you can add a custom label as well. So if you go to the bottom of that list during setup, there is an option to give them a custom name too. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's one to note. And you, you mentioned kind of adding it onto devices like, it was when you put it on the remote was that you know a device that you would have say lost in the past and had struggled to find and did you find that it really helped you in finding that device then well, absolutely yeah um, uh, like most people who are visually impaired uh, as i am sure a lot of people listening to this podcast will relate to um are very careful about where they put things because the only way we can find things is when we put them away very carefully we know exactly where they are and when we want to find them we can go there but when you're living in a family situation and um, many different family members are using the remote control um, of it you know it's very common that uh, when you go to look for the remote control it's not where you would expect it to be it's under a cushion or it's on a different chair or it's on the the television stand or something like that, you know. So, 
Um, I many many occasions since I, I uh, set it up, I have had to use it, and um, and uh, it's worked very successfully for me. You know? And obviously, it's particularly useful when you're on your own in the house because you can't even ask anybody else where, where the remote control is. But uh, um, yeah, so it's wonderful. I, I, I'm finding it a, a wonderful help, you know. And do you almost always use it with Siri or have you tried using it with voiceover uh, in the Find My app or what way do you tend to use it? Well, I, I say, yeah, hey Siri, um, find my backpack. That's what I do. OK, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Your yeah. first. <laughs> oh, she, she's given out there in the background. <laughs> Even my one went off here too. <laughs> <laughs> You're setting up after the series in the country. Good man yourself, Michael. Um, so yeah, it, is there anything, I guess, you know, you'd like to change with the air tags? Like, is there anything, have you ever used anything like this before? And is there anything you'd change about the product? Um, well, there are. I, I now that you tell me that you can actually label other things other than the 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 uh, standard um, items, um, uh, that's obviously the solution to that. Um, but uh, and and the only other thing I can think of is that if there was an easier way to attach it to things like uh, like a remote control, um, uh, it it probably would be useful. Other than that, I think it's so simple to set up and uh, it's so easy to use that it's 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 really marvelous. You make a good point about the, you know, trying to attach it to things because I have a little magnifier here. It's one of those standard, uh, you know, the, the small little handheld magnifiers that I, I always have it in the pocket. And, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you might put it down for whatever reason and then, you know, oh, where's it gone to? Usually it's next to my phone, but now it's not. What have I done? But uh, it, it can be difficult to attach. In fact, I haven't been able to find a good kind of way of attaching the uh, AirTag to the device and still making it comfortable to hold because you want it to be comfortable to hold when you're using it so often. So yeah, you make a fair point, uh, but you've been using sellotape on the remote. Yes, yes, it's a bit cumbersome and not very pretty, but it's effective, it works. And strangely enough, it hasn't come off yet. You know, I, I expect someday it will come off and then, then there'll be a big search around the house to try and find the air tag. <laughs> But, um, well, you you could there's the finding the remote uh, w might be easier than the but you'll find the air tag for sure. Yes, it's uh, yes, find it. yeah yeah exactly. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah, generally you enjoy using the air tag. Then, um, do you think they're worth the money? I think they're in and around the thirty euro mark. Do you think it's worth that? Well, it, it, it's probably a little bit expensive for what it is, but. You know, I, I I think it is an excellent piece of technology. And um, to answer your question, I think yes, it is worth it because for me, it, it gives me that little bit of independence that I, I, if everybody's out of the house and I can't find a remote control, I don't have to wait till somebody comes back to find it. Um, <clears throat> so you know, it, it, to me, it's it's a very useful, and it is worth thirty euro. I think you know. Okay, interesting. And, uh, Hi, Michael. Has has the battery run out yet? How many how many months are you using it so far? So I'm just curious. I would think um, uh, probably five or six months, um, but I don't know whether the battery uh, um, usage is related to the uh, amount you actually have to use the air tag to, you know, to call it, or whether it's just that it 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 winds down. You know, uh, over a period of time, you know, so, uh, but uh, I haven't had to change the battery at all. No. Yeah, I've heard different reports about the battery. Some people say seven months, some people say bones of a year, I think. Um, I'm not sure about yourself, David. Have you had yours more than a year? Well, yes, I have. And I've just gone into the app, uh, the Find My app here to take a look. And uh, it's good you said it, Joe, because I'm actually getting a low battery warning. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've now I have had mine more than a year, but um, it is interesting you say it because, uh, yeah, it, it's good to to check these things. I didn't actually get a notification that mine was uh, running low, but uh, when I went into the Find My app now, 
it, it has given me an indication that one of my air tags has a low battery. So that is uh, interesting to know. I, I can say I, I replaced mine after about 12 months, guys, and uh, I probably use it every uh, kind of every month or so. I had it on my on my bicycle actually, just in case <laughs> if, if someone someone were to cycle off with it. But I did get one of the uh, the you know the tile trackers, um, which I think have a, usually have about a three year battery life. And I did find that the air tag was quite good in this so far as you can you can replace. I think it's a lithium. I think it's one of those zero twenty thirty two lithium batteries. Um, so you can pick those up in most stores, you know, for um, you know, euro or two. So I like the fact that the battery is replaceable in all air tags. Yeah, especially compared to the tiles where they kind of brick themselves yeah. a little bit after exactly, David, you know yeah, the yeah. Uh, mm. after some time. I've had that. I I had a tile yeah. sticker, and uh, it didn't last very long, unfortunately. Yeah. Once the battery died, that was the yeah, end of that poor sticker. So yeah. Um, well, that yeah, it's easy enough to to source, and they're easy. They're they're they're, I think, easy enough to change. I mean, uh, people who use, for instance, the liquid um, uh, the, um, the liquid. Um, uh, I can't remember what you call it, but the thing to measure your your if you make a cup of tea. Um, and it, it beeps when it comes to a certain uh, height. They, they use the same type of batteries, and um, people who use them will be have to, will be familiar with changing those kind of batteries. You know, so so it's it, good to know. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it is good to know. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 in that sense, it shouldn't be a major problem. You know, because the batteries are really readily available. I think so. Overall, you're happy enough with the product, Michael. You you think it's a, a good product and something you would buy? Yes, yes, indeed, I, I do, I do. And and um, you know, as I say, it is a bit expensive, but you know, if for the the benefit uh, for 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 us visually impaired people uh, in in that type of situation, which I've described, it's it gives me that amount of independence, you know, and. Uh, and uh, of course, independence is, is so important to us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's 100%. an interesting topic, um, finding items. Um, what about uh, putting it on moving objects like um, your guide dog? I was dog? just going to say, yeah. <laughs> is that a bad uh, idea or is it um, frowned upon? Or does it work even? Well, I, I personally would not know about that because I, I've really only tried it on the, the, uh, the remote control, so. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, anybody else have any information on, on, on if you're allowed to put on moving objects? I know people is probably is obviously out of the question because you can't. Yeah. But your guide dog, I mean, I, I, I know the guide dog is not much chance of it going missing or anything like that, but but sometimes uh, they might take a mad notion and if you're on a, on a free run or something like that and you, you were yeah. worried yeah. that someone had um, taken it or I would assume uh, you could do it chase, on a pet, like for a well, pet, exactly, or a pet even, yeah. You know, like instead of you know having the na person's name and number on the collar or whatever, you you know exactly where they're gone. <laughs> Yeah, and it is interesting that as well you can, uh, if you come across a lost air tag um, or, or a, an air tag that is on a device that appears to be lost, you can tap it and you can get the information and uh, some. you can set it up to allow uh, to get contact information for the owner. Uh, so it can be used in those ways, Mairead, which is really interesting, yeah. Okay, and, and luggage I think is one one very popular use for it as well. Um, I was absolutely. just going to say my sister was traveling one day and I had my backpack in her car and I had an air tag on it. And um, <laughs> I just um, messaged her then maybe a couple of hours later and I just said to her, um, what are you doing in sale? How do you know I'm there? She was able to track the air tag and then told me where she was basically. You're not supposed <laughs> to be stalking people like that, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. Interesting, yeah. I no, mean, that's the luggage case. Yeah, excellent. So um, a lot of uh, products are starting to build it in now in, into their um, products. These these finder uh, solutions like um, Sky Q remote, for example, you, you can you can press the Q in front of the Sky box, and your remote will start beeping loudly, and it'll help you find it. So um, it's it's good to see. And we have so many devices nowadays that it's good to see that this um, this happening. You know. Absolutely. Even even I suppose for sighted users that drive cars, um, some cars have it built in now. You can press the the key, the fob on on, on your keys, and um, 
your, your lights will start flashing and then uh, you could start to, this little siren will start going on so you can find your um, car in a busy car park so that, that's just kind of getting all these ideas from the find my app you know so yeah it's, uh, it's great wait till the car starts driving to you i know i think some of the teslas can do that and wait, wait till that starts happening the car will just drive to you it'll be mental our day will come, David. Our day will come. Absolutely. One of these days, it, it uh, will be self-driving and they, they won't know what hills then. Um, so listen, Michael, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Talking Technology. And thank you so much for testing out the air tags. Hope you enjoy them. Yeah, thank you very much, David. Fantastic. So uh, that is brilliant. Really, they are really cool products. I, I have two of them here and uh, they're, they're really, really useful products. You can use them for so uh, many things. Uh, all I need now is some way to find a convenient way to get it on my uh, handy little handheld magnifier here and then I will be a very, very happy camper. So that is the air tags. And next up, uh, we are going to be taking a look at the Transport for Ireland live app. The new TFI live app has been out the last little while, but today is a big day for this app because the real time and journey planner apps are both shutting down today. Now, these apps are traditionally used for finding out how to, uh, when basically a next uh, bus is going to come to your stop. So let's say you go to a stop, you can use the real time app to actually get the information and then it will tell you, OK, the next boss at this stop is coming in three minutes or in six minutes or whatever the case may be. And what's interesting is while we've been uh, talking here on the podcast, I got a notification on my phone and I've received similar notifications to this uh, in recent times but it says urgent action required. So it is being very forceful and it is telling us to uh, basically that we need to migrate over to the new TFI live app, which is replacing the real time app. So if you're used to using the real time app, you will be used to all of the favorites and you probably have all of your favorites uh, set up in the real time app and it's important to switch over so move your favorites over to the new TFI live app. Now the real time app has already shut down it seems but you can still move your favorites over. So earlier today I recorded a quick demo on how you can do this and more importantly how you can do it with voiceover and thankfully it's quite an accessible process. So here is how you move your favorites over from the real time app to the TFI live app. Day that the real time app today is the 18th of April and it's also the day that the Real Time Ireland app is being shut down. The app which people generally use to find out the next bus to come to a bus stop is being replaced by the TFI Live app today. So in this quick demo, I'm going to show you exactly how you can transfer your favorite stops from the Real Time Ireland app, which is the app that is being shut down, over to the new TFI live app. So I've got voiceover on on my phone and I have both apps installed. The Real Time Ireland app has now been removed from the app store, but you will still be able to download the TFI live app, which is its replacement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Real Time app because the first thing we need to do is get the stop number of the stop that I want to add to my favorites. So let's open the Real Time app. Real Time Ireland. And I'll double tap. Real time. OK, and uh, I'm now in the main kind of screen of the app. So if you've used the app before, you'll be familiar with all Menus. this. Search, depart now button. You know, all of this depart now stuff, all the, the usual buttons. They'll still be uh, where you're used to them even after the shutdown. So you'll know if you've used the app before that this is where all of your favorite and most recently used uh, bus stops will show up. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to take the Merchant's Key stop, uh, which is a stop here in Cork, and I'm going to move it over to the new TFI Live app, which the, is the app that we'll need to use going forward. 
So the first thing I need to do is I need to get the merchant's key stop number. So if I go through my favorites, the stop should appear in the list. Last used points. Merchant's key stop two four eight six two one in Cork City. So I'm going to get that number again. Merchant's key stop two four eight six two one. Two, four, eight, six, two, one. Perfect. So I'm now going to move over to TFI Live. Real time Ireland, TFI Live. And I'm going to pop in here. TFI Live, main menu, button, navigation, landmark. Now in this app, there are um, what I can only describe as tabs. These tabs are uh, used for navigating through different sections of the app. But uh, if you've used many apps on iPhone, you'll probably be familiar with this setup. Now for adding a favorite stop, the, uh, the tab that we want to use is the departures tab. So I'm now going to tap departures. Departures tab three or four. Double tap. Departures main menu button navigation and now landmark. I'm going to search for a stop. There is a search button up in the very top right corner of your screen. Search for a stop button. End. Cancel. Search field is editing. Search landmark. Character mode. Now numbers. I'm going to enter that uh, stop number. So go to three, numbers. Two, 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 four, three, eight. four, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, six, three six, results found. Six, five, four, three, two, one result, one. two. Two, one, one, zero, go. One results found. One result. Hopefully that is the result we're looking for. Stop. Two, four, eight, six, two, one. Merchants key, Cork City, link. And there we go. There we have it. So I'm now going to double tap that stop and it will bring me into that stops view. Hang back button, navigation, landmark. Hang on while we look up live departures for you. Found live departures. OK, that's fine. So I can now check the live departures from here. Uh, there is uh, if you have low vision, uh, you will be able to see that there's a little gray section that you can tap and it will tell you when the next bus is going to come in that area. 16 minutes, row two, column four. 16 minutes. Um, but for now, what I want to do is I want to add this Hang stop to my favorites. So it's uh, updating in real time there. Uh, I want to check for the uh, favorites button. So there's a favorites button up in the very top right. Add favorite stop button. End and I'll double banner. tap. Add, add favorite stop web dialog. Add favorite stop heading level two. And I'm going to flick through here. Enter favorites name. So enter the favorites name. So this is if you want to add a name and this name is what will show up in the list. So I'm going to go to the text box. Enter favorites name or press add to keep default label. Stop. So I am two, actually four, going eight, to change. Six, I'll stop that talking there for a second. I am actually going to change this because I uh, wouldn't necessarily always just refer to this as merchants key to this. Uh, to me, this will be town. Um, if you're from Cork for some weird reason, we have a tendency to call Cork City Town. I don't know why, uh, but uh, that is the way. So I'm going to rename this stop because uh, I, I want to be a bit of a rebel. So I'm going to double tap here. Insertion point at end. T. And I'm going to enter T. T, T O O O Q W W W B N N N. Add Let's favorite see stop. That that Web dialog. Correct. Enter favorite's name. Enter favorite's name or press add to keep default label. Text field is editing town character mode insertion Brilliant. point at end. So now all I need to go is I need to flick until I find the add button. Cancel add button found live and departures then, add button. Then double tap to add it to my favorites. Add stop added to your favorites dismiss. And it is as simple as that. Now the tabs at the bottom we spoke about those before. So on the bottom tabs on the far uh, left of the screen. Web alert dialogue. Stop added to your favorites. Okay, dismiss I need to dismiss button. that first. Third, remove favorites. So favorites. Tab one of four. Hang on while we look up live departure. A favorites tab. So all you need to do then is double tap the favorites tab. Found live main menu button. Navigation. And you land. will return to the main menu which is where you are basically in a favorites list. And for all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same as the old real time Ireland app. 
um, it its changes are almost purely visual. So if you're using this app with voiceover, just go to the favorites tab. It will also be the tab that the app opens on, uh, assuming that it hasn't been opened and moved to another tab previously. So you can just go to the favorites tab, find in this case what I've named town, double tap, and then you will be in the view where it will show you all of the departures for the merchant's key stop, which I have now added to my favorites in the TFI live app. It's a simple process, albeit a bit tedious. So certainly if you've got a, a number of stops added to the app, it's going to take you a while to transfer them over. But it is a process that you only have to do once. And it's important to note that even after the app does shut down, the old Real Time Ireland app, you will still be able to access your favorite stops. So that is worth noting that the interface won't change once the app shuts down. Uh, you'll just not be able to get the actual information out of the app and you'll have to move over to the TFI Live app for that. But other than that, hopefully this new app is going to be a little bit more reliable. And uh, yeah, a tedious process perhaps, especially if you've got a lot of stops. But once it's done, hopefully it will be that bit more reliable and usable for you. So that is how you move from the Real Time Ireland app to the new TFI Live app. And there we go. So not a brutal process, uh, but one that is very doable. And if you do need some support with uh, moving your stops over or you need any technical support in general, a reminder that as always, you can send an email to labs at ncbi.ie or you can give us a call on 1-800-911-110. That is the number to call if you need some support. Um, Joe, I think were you looking to come in there? Excellent, David. Um, uh, review there. Um, yeah, I, I noticed. Uh, I had a look at the app this morning. Um, I know it's actually JJ Cavanaugh buses are added to it now, but uh, you have to, you, you take note that um, you won't get notifications from from that particular service, but you will you will be able to look at the times and the next next bus and, and stuff like that. The actual timetable. Um, so you can search it's for those people that don't get a more frequent service, you know, like uh, living in the country, it's usually the likes of cabinets and, and a couple of other services like that. So um, I know is that some of the country bu buses have been added to it as well, just to let people in rural areas know that. But, uh, and is that the TFI Live app, is it? Yeah, that's right, the TFI Live app. Yeah, okay. Cabinet has its own, it has its own web tracker, but um, um, you know, it, it's, it's fairly accessible. It works uh, well enough once you get used to it. But um, at least you can get the timetable quite efficiently and add it to your favorites in the TFI app just by adding, just by searching via town, you know. So um, uh, it, it, there won't be much more than one stop in, in small towns. So um, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to search for it that way. Absolutely. And Joe, did you find it, you tried it out as well. Did you find it a relatively accessible experience? I found it relatively accessible, I must say. Yeah, I found it quite good. Um, well, I cleared cookies, which was probably a mistake. Um, uh, I think I had the old app at one stage. I cleared cookies and then I had to reset um, my um, location services and uh, push notifications and things like that. But um, other than that, yeah, I found it um, really, really good and, and easy to get around. Um, I, I think it could still improve slightly, but uh, I found it generally good. Excellent. Good to know. Well, that's one to be aware of. That app, it has now shut down, but uh, the Real Time Ireland app has shut down, but you can still move your favourites and stuff like that over to the new uh, TFI Live app. And like Joe said, you can also search by town and stuff to add new favourites if you so desire. So that is uh, how you can uh, do the transfer over to the new app. And in other tech news, Joe, we, we've uh, we've got some tech news this week, but uh, new features in the iOS for uh, voiceover users and accessibility stuff. Tell us, what have we got? Yeah, um, so, um, well, voiceover users and um, I suppose there's other small accessibility um, inclusions. It's 16.4, so it was released of 16.4, basically, it uh, made some bug fixes. Uh, that was one of the bigger things. Uh, Braille displays were losing Bluetooth connection and stuff like that. So they fixed that. 
Um, also, there's a new app out called Freeform. It came out in 16.0. It um, hasn't been widely used yet, or I haven't heard, heard of a lot of people using it yet, but um, they've made that more accessible as well with VoiceOver. So um, you can now add sticky notes and they're more accessible. You can write on the canvas. And, and the fact that they've made it more accessible and maybe more people will use it. Freeform is like a collaboration tool for uh, you, you, you can work on with your colleagues or your friends to um, work on ideas and, and things like that. You know what I mean? So um, it's like a big whiteboard, really. Big whiteboard. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's really a, a cool app. I haven't got to use it a, a whole lot, um, but maybe I'll be giving it a go now that it's uh, a bit more accessible. Um, Joe, have Joe. you tried using eSpeak? You can now have custom voiceover voices and eSpeak is one of them. Have you tried using it on your phone yet? No, I know I noticed it was there, but um, I wouldn't be a big fan of eSpeak, so I haven't tried using it. How about, you, how about yourself? Have you given it a go? I, I have given it a go. Um, I think I'll be sticking with good old Moira for now because uh, I didn't find it amazing, but hey, if you're someone who maybe you you know you use NVDA and you just prefer that voice, uh, you're you can now uh, download uh, the eSpeak NG app for uh, iPhone in the App Store, and it's basically a plugin that lets you add the eSpeak voices to VoiceOver if you so desire. So that's a, a cool well, little thing that you yeah, can do now. Well, it was good to. Um get those extra voices uh, everybody has a, has a preference. Their uh, eloquence is in there as well as we've previously heard and um, there's lots of uh, blind and vision impaired people, fa um, fans of eloquence because of its pronunciation of words, it does pronounce words excellently. Um, but anyway, eSpeak, I won't be moving to that one. It uh, seems, seems to leave a trail in, in, in behind it and I don't, I don't really like it. But anyway, that's only per personal. Um, other things were um, voice isolation was added to um, normal audio calls. It was already there for uh, FaceTime calls and um, uh, I, I, I think video calls, but but now for audio calls, you, you can um, have voice isolation so people can hear your voice better. And that suit people, I suppose, if they were um, coming into, we'll say, um, Teams meetings via dial up and things like that. There is uh, lots of vision impaired people that like to use um, the dial up option to um, enter Teams calls or, or, or Zoom meetings and um, uh, then they'll be able to have voice isolation to remove that um, e external sounds uh, and um, make it a better experience for themselves. Um, uh, well, so new emojis, um, nothing that jumped off the, the um, wall for me or anything but it's 21 new emojis. Um, voice over, another voice over thing is there's a um, support in the weather app for maps. So if you're navigating the map before, it wouldn't give you any real feedback as such, you know, if you're going through a map in, in the weather app, but now it'll give you, um, at least uh, it'll tell you where you're putting your finger and give you the weather information for that area on the map. So so that, that's that's quite good. Any, any voiceover improvement um, when you're using kind of augmented reality things inside maps and stuff is always good to me so so that's an improvement as well uh, let me see. so it's good to just see like the voiceover and stuff like that it is always improving you know sometimes we can uh, we, we get so used to voiceover being the way it is that maybe we don't take a look at some of its you know newer features but it's great to see that it's always improving then and that Apple to their credit are continuing to improve the accessibility of their own apps like the weather app and the freeform app it's good to see really isn't it exactly yeah and um the fact that when a big update comes out like 16.0 for example um it seems to always have uh, a few voiceover bugs and uh, when they go to 16.1 2 3 4 and so on uh, eventually they get to fix the voiceover bugs fully before the next update if you know what i mean so that, that that is quite good um there there was um one more small thing, I suppose, if for people that um, suffer from light effects, um, maybe people have epilepsy or, or just don't like um, uh, flashing lights, there, there is a, a setting in accessibility that you can turn on that will dim these lights when they come on in, in videos and, and things like that, you know. So if you're playing media and it uh, has light effects that don't suit you, it, it will dim them automatically, so it won't affect you. That's um, really cool, isn't yeah. it? That that's cool, and it, it's it just shows the intelligence of, of 
of the technology nowadays that we can recognize that it's going to come on and and, and adapt straight away and, and fix problems like that. Absolutely. So. And it, it is uh, interesting because Apple in recent years, they have used uh, Global Accessibility Day to announce uh, new features and updates we've got in recent years. We've got things like door detection and stuff like that on that day. So that day will be coming around again soon. So hopefully, hopefully we will get some new features on that day, but we'll need to wait and see. Exactly. Um, but uh, we will wait with anticipation. Who knows what's coming down yeah, the road? I think, I think the biggest place, to, if I was going to uh, have a crit criticism, is uh, Siri. I think Siri could improve a, a lot more on, on the iPhone, um, especially leaving behind some of the older phones. Maybe maybe that's the plan, but uh, I find um, Siri could, could improve maybe by an extra 20 percent and uh, maybe keep up. It, it seems to have a few server issues or non-response issues at times, but um, generally it's it, Yeah, it's okay. just about to come in there, Joe. Um, yeah, if, if Anton, I've heard some people commenting that their experience of using Siri has actually gone back from where yeah. it used to be. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. That, that, that's, a, that's a good point, exactly. It's gone back backwards a little bit and I like it to come come back, come back come forwards again to where even it was or, or, or improve on the next update. Um, I noticed they, they included one interesting feature which we, we actually missed out um, speaking about on um, previous um, version of 16 was the auto answer. So some of the problems with some of the accessibility options before was um, they're great when you turn them on, but how does somebody turn them on that can't we'll say access a touch screen or is not very good at a touch screen or something like that. So now you can turn on the auto answer with Siri. So you can say Siri turn on auto answer and you can say Siri turn off auto answer if it suits you, you don't want it on. So that was one one interesting one that, that came out. I discovered when I was doing research on 16.4. So yeah, look, uh, as we as we criticize Siri, it also has some improvements, but I think it could get better. I, I'd like to see a 20% improvement on Siri the next time they, they go to even 16.5 or eventually when you get to 17. Yeah, absolutely. I'd hope that, you know, in, in time, we, especially with the advancements of things like we, we've spoken about chat GPT before and so on, that maybe technology like that, if that stuff starts to get integrated into the likes of Siri, boy, we're going to be into an interesting time. It's uh, <laughs> there will hopefully be uh, some big updates in that arena soon, but we can certainly hope. Yeah, yeah def definitely. Uh, as as AI pushes forward, I think um, a big investment into into Siri will have to happen, and um, I, I know uh, the Amazon speakers um, probably are the most common one out there, and probably most successful voice operated smart speaker. Um, but yeah, I think Siri Siri needs to catch up in that area. Joe, while we're on this, uh, do you? I know we plugged it previously, but do you want to plug the HomePod Mini course? It's coming up really soon, I believe. Well, I think there is probably only one more. Um, day or, or maybe uh, maybe the end of this week if if we could squeeze a couple of people in but um it's next monday actually it's on the 20 the 24th of april um at half two and okay, uh, just to um mention again what we'll be covering is um the, the basic setup of of the speaker and the physical appearance of it um as making calls and texts and um, uh, timers, alarms, reminders, um, information searches, things like that. So um, th that's the general gist of what we'll be covering. And I'll be presenting the course with Maureen Lanigan. And um, I, I was talking about Siri there, so it'll be all be all Siri based and uh, we'll be covering the things that Siri does really well. And we'll mention a couple of small things about um, smart home technology as well. So it's only it's a level one. Um, if it goes well, we will uh, uh, um, investigate uh, making a level two of the HomePod Mini smart speaker course. And thanks very much, David. Brilliant. Fantastic. On other uh, tech news fronts, uh, Daniel, you've been trying out Microsoft Power Toys. Tell us, what are Power Toys, first of all? OK, yeah, I briefly mentioned this uh, a couple of weeks ago, but um, so yeah, Power Toys, it's kind of an ongoing project uh from microsoft it's 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 only for windows 10 windows 11 so sorry anybody out there that's on windows 8 or 7 or god forbid xp but um they, they don't be insulting xp now i liked xp 
<laughs> for any diehards that are out there, unfortunately, uh, the power ties won't work. So basically, there uh, the reason I suppose why it's called power tie. Uh, power ties is because there's lots of different uh, features in it, right? So it's a little bundle software that you download. Now, the download and install is not as straightforward as I would like. And so I did create a video which will be going on to our NCBI Labs YouTube channel soon, I believe, David. That's correct. Yeah, it should be yeah. going up uh, really soon, really soon. Really soon. Good, good, good. So, um, yeah, so there'll, there'll be a kind of a, a video guide through it there. Now, I'll run down through, um, and I'm going to exhaust the list of the power ties that come, but I am going to talk about the ones which I think our listeners here today would um, find interesting or go, hmm, I might like that feature. All right. So, um, an always on top app is quite good because, you know, maybe in a workplace environment, you want to keep the calculator constantly out in view. You don't want it hiding in behind Excel or that uh, Chrome window you might have open. So if you want to pin, um, let's say, the likes of calculator or any app, and just picking calculator as the example. So with the Windows control and T keys, uh, it'll it'll force that on. Now you must have the power ties installed and running for these keyboard shortcuts to work. So that's one little um, piece I like out of it. And um, there's lots more on. I'm just going to go down a wee bit more through the list of them here. Um, there's also an image resizer. Now, this was out on the Windows XP power ties that were out a good few years ago. But basically what uh, the image resizer would allow you to do. So you have images maybe that you want to email or send to somebody from your from your uh, Windows based machine. Often they can be huge. Maybe you took them and copied them over from your digital camera or your smartphone and you want to send them to somebody or work on them on your PC before sending them off. Often uh, images now, there's because of the megapixels, we've got huge imagery and some emails uh, won't send quite big files like that. So where the file is resting in your Windows folder, you can simply uh, right click or shift uh, shift F10 on that to bring up the options menu and the resize. Um, it'll detect if it's an image and it'll give you an option to to uh, highlight resize from the menu and then you can set it to, you know, the small, medium, large and it'll give you the pixel dimensions of it or you can even do a custom one as well. So that's a very handy little tool uh, for anybody maybe that might be working in the small bit with graphics, photographs, that kind of thing. Uh, there's keyboard manager in there. Now, I did not go in here too much. It it sounds very good in what I can do. It's keyboard manager. It allows you to customize um, keys and create your own keyboard shortcuts, uh, you know, for, for yourself. So personally in Windows that you could have, you know, something mad like control full stop will do whatever, you know, uh, uh, tell it to do something. So that's a that's quite an, an interesting one to explore. The mouse utilities I found was quite good. So somebody uh, who might find it difficult to find in the mouse pointer on the screen, the mouse utilities you can uh, double double tap on, let's say on the control key, and it puts probably like a spotlight. Basically, all your background kind of dims a little bit, uh, but there's this nice moon size glow over your mouse pointer, and when you release the control key that's gone uh, gone away. So it's just a real handy one for where's my mouse pointer? Where is it gone now? Uh, there's lots of different options in there as well. You can put uh, mouse pointer crosshairs. There's all different options in there. So I'd um, I'd, uh, I'd encourage people uh, to download, install it and check that one out as well. Uh, paste is plain text, right? This is a really useful one. Often we can be a little bit naughty and we can copy text off a web page or out of another document or off a PDF or wherever and we're pasting it into let's say Microsoft Word or something like that and lo and behold the background color from the web page comes with it the bold the whole lot and um, you know you you probably have to spend a few minutes tidying that up so paste as plain text is a, a nice little utility that's included in the power ties suite it allows you to do control windows and v so uh, basically you're controlling v to paste but throw in the windows key there as well and it just puts it in as plain text so um any any uh, adaptions on the text that you've copied from the web page are lost and it's put uh, plainly in it looks like you typed it yourself i guess um 
Uh, there's another one on it, quick accent. Now, <clears throat> we're lucky, I suppose, with our Irish language, we have the fathers over the A, E, I, O and Jew that we can uh, quickly type those by holding down the right alt or the alt -R key and pressing our A, E, I, O, U to get a fada. But if you happen to be typing in another language um, with your standard UK keyboard, uh, the quick accent will allow you to um, hold down a letter and press space and give you options of all the different characters uh, out there. So the ones that will be across the French language, German language, all, all across the world. So there's plenty of ways of accessing further characters. So if you ever do have to type up some bits in in um, in a foreign language, not English, that you can quickly add in uh, the accents and all that. So it could be useful for students or third level uh, going students who are studying the languages. Um, the, the final one or the second last one, sorry, I want to talk about just before I hand back to you, David. Uh, there's a Windows key shortcut guide which for people uh, who be who be listening in today, you know, keyboard shortcuts are brilliant and whatever program you have opened at a time, uh, you know, let's say you're in uh, Microsoft Word or you're on the web page. If you do the Windows key with a question mark, so it's it's, it's Windows shift and uh, the forward slash together, those three keys, it'll bring up all the available keyboard shortcuts for exactly where you are. So it'll tell you all the available sh shortcuts to you. You can also change that up by, um, there's a setting in there you can make it even easier to do uh, by holding down the Windows key and it'll it'll bring up on screen a list of all the keyboard shortcuts available to you. My favorite, my favorite um, is the text extractor. Often we get a, uh, a photograph with text in it or an inaccessible PDF or something like that, and you just want to quickly grab that text. Um, so it's, it's going to be used with the mouse, so it won't suit everybody. But if you can use the mouse, um, you can start off with Wind Shift, uh, holding down the Windows key, the Shift key and the T key. We might be familiar, you know, a quick screen grab is done with Windows Shift and S. If you wanted to snip out a part of the screen, well, the T, uh, just change the S for the T and you can now draw a box around a photograph, let's say with text in it. Uh, go straight into your notepad or Word or wherever you want, wherever your your um, typing word processor is and do a control and V and it'll paste that exact text in. So it captures it, does the OCR and it puts it onto your clipboard ready for pasting wherever you want to go. So that is a fantastic um, Part and for me, it, it's the it's the gem of all the utilities that you get included. Now I've just went through some of um, the the bits and pieces in it. There's lots more in in the in the Power Ties uh, utility suite. So definitely, definitely worth downloading and trying that out and seeing what you'd like to do yourself. What, what's useful to you because it's going to be unique for everyone. And it's worth noting, uh, Daniel, as well, that these really are going to be most beneficial, probably for those with low vision as opposed yeah. to no vision in this case. I Yeah, I, I would say that, but uh, there are one or two little bits in there for um, everybody, regardless of, of level of vision, you know, if you're a screen reader user. Um, there is uh, there that is a keyboard one you, you mentioned sounds like yes. that could be very beneficial for uh, people with no vision even. Yeah, yes, absolutely. As as was the image resizer. So, you know, you could be sending a, you, you could you could you could be sending a, an image by email from your laptop. It's coming back. It's bounced. It's too big. Um, how how do you quickly resize an image on the fly? So I, I like that one that you can and there's three presets in it, or you can do a custom one. So I like that one as well. I think that would be useful. OK, good to know. And Daniel, you have recorded as well, and thank you for doing so. You've recorded not just a video showing how to install it, but you've recorded loads of videos uh, on the Microsoft yep. Power Toys. And these will be released. Uh, we'll, we'll release these over time, but with the first one will be going up hopefully by the end of this week. So if uh, people want to go to the NCBI labs, remember the NCBI labs 
YouTube channel. It's a brand new technology focused YouTube channel. Subscribe over there and you will get all of the videos that we produce. You will get these podcasts and you will also get Daniel's fantastic videos on Power Toys. So Daniel, yep. thank you so much for doing those yep. for us. Oh, and there's one more I forgot to mention. It was the video conference mute. Um, so this will be useful for everybody. You're on a Zoom call, you're on a Teams call, you're on a, you know, any of the other um, video conference utilities out there. Uh, Windows Shift and Q, no matter what one you're on, will kill that microphone. What was that? Sorry, you were on mute Win there, Daniel. Sorry, Windows Shift and Q. It's OK, I'm only teasing you. <laughs> uh, listen, thank you so much, Daniel, uh, for that. And Daniel, we'll stick with you because uh, also you have a quick update for us on Easy Reader for Windows. What's happening with Easy Reader for Windows? Yes, so um, you, re you may remember, I think it was around summer last year. Um, I can't be certain on this, but it was around summer last year that Dolphin made um, the Easy Reader for Windows. It used to be um, a premium paid for app. They made it free. I think it was around last September. And now uh, what what they've done is they've up, up the compatibility of it. So when it came out as a free app, it did not support PDFs. You could download PDFs from your chosen library, such as Bookshare.ie, amongst others. And when you went to open then in, in Easy Reader, you went to open a PDF, it would actually throw you out to maybe Adobe Acrobat Reader or across to Microsoft Edge, which is another quite popular PDF handler on Windows systems. But they've updated it there in uh, to to version 10.4, which came out around the start of middle of March. And that, uh, that particular release is now supporting PDFs internally inside of Dolphin Easy Reader. So no matter which of the three major platforms you're on, whether it's iOS, Android, or now Windows, Dolphin Easy Reader will open a PDF within itself. So that's a great development. And, um, uh, you know, hat tip to, to the guys over at Dolphin for getting that one over the line. I know it was a big request, um, you know, from everybody to be able to do that. So. That's a bit of good news on on the um, you know anyone that's getting PDFs, uh, maybe e some eBooks out there are coming in PDFs, and you would love for them to open in your Dolphin Easy Reader. Now they will on your Windows machine. Fantastic. Good to hear. And do you know what? I think that's where we'll leave it. It's good to end on some good news. Thank you for yes. that, Daniel. And. Okay, uh, Thank you to all of the contributors who joined us today, to Murray, to Michael, Joe, Murray, uh, and JP, and everyone who contributed to the show. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. Uh, sorry if I am, but thank you so much for your uh, company over the last little while. Hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we will be back on the 9th of May for our next episode of Talking Technology. If you want to get in touch with us, in the meantime, as always, you can send an email to labs at ncbi.ie or you can call the NCBI Labs help desk if you need some technical support. That number 1-800-911-110. So thank you so much for joining us and we will be back again, as I say, on the 9th of May. But for now, thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Talking Technology Podcast with NCBI Labs. If you would like to support our show, you can visit donate.ncbi.ie. The NCBI Labs Talking Technology Podcast is proudly sponsored by IA Labs, the market leader in the provision of digital accessibility services.